Alan Lilly is curator of the National Soils Archive here at the Craigie Butler campus of the James Hutton Institute. It's a fascinating facility. Alan, tell us about the Soils Archive. Hi, well, welcome to the National Soils Archive. Um, here we have samples from all over Scotland, um, from about 15,000 locations, and we have over 50,000 samples in total. The earliest sample we have is around about 1934, um, and we're still adding samples into the archive now. Um, the benefit of, of having an archive and maintaining these samples is that we can look pa back into the past. It effectively time capsules of conditions of soils in the past. So we can use this information, we can use these samples to actually look how things have changed, how nutrient status has changed, how car soil carbon has changed over time. Um, and we are constantly finding new ways of, of using the samples. Uh, initially, a lot of the chemistry that was done was what we call wet chemistry, which is quite destructive. But a lot of the new techniques we have now are um, using spectroscopy and the likes of the non-destructive samples. So hopefully these samples will persist for a long time into the future and be able to be used by researchers well into the, the, in the future, um, long after I'm, I'm gone. This map shows us the locations of where we've taken the soil samples from. Um, as I said, we've taken them throughout the whole of Scotland. Um, the blue dots here show where we have what we call selected profiles. Now these profiles were taken. The soil profile is where we dig a hole down to about a metre and we sample each of the individual layers separately. And these blue dots show us roughly where we were taking samples to characterise the soil maps that we were making. The red dots you can see is on a nice regular grid and these samples are from what we call our National Soils Inventory. So these locations, um, 5 kilometres, 10 kilometres and 20 kilometre intervals, we went and we sampled each 10 kilometre, we dug a profile pit, sampled the soils in layers, um, brought the samples back to the lab, which we still have in, in the archive. This was done between about 1978 and 1988. Um, between 2007, we went back to a quarter of these sites and resampled them. And the idea there was to try and find if there'd been any changes in the soils, particularly if there'd been changes in soil carbon over that intervening period. Um, this National Soils Inventory is one of our key data sets, one of our key archive materials that we house within the, the, the archive. We produce maps at uh, a range of scales. Um, this map is at a 1 to 250,000 scale. So it's really quite broad. It's a reconnaissance scale map. Um, but the beauty of this map is it covers the whole country. Um, so we use this a lot when we're doing national scale modelling. It provides the basis for lots of, of, of different uh, assessments, land evaluations, biophysical resource analysis that we do. Um, it was constructed around about uh, the late 1970s um, and it, uh, published in the early 1980s. And, and the, what we, we managed to do with this is we incorporated some of the earlier mapping um, of which some of the samples from, from that mapping program is in the archive. Um, and we done a fair amount of new mapping, particularly over in the, the north and west. Uh, and, and the islands. So here we have some soil monoliths. Um, what these are are actual pieces of soil that were taken out um, of, of the ground and impregnated with a resin in order to preserve them. And really they're just representative of some of the different soil types that we have in Scotland from brown earths, clay soils uh, and podzolic soils. So what we have here is one of our, our earliest recording books. When a sample was taken in the field and brought into the lab, the information about that sample, where it was taken, who took it, why it was taken, was recorded in books like these. Uh, each sample was given an individual unique number, uh, an, an ID, um, and that links back to the samples we have in the archive. So there's a link between the sample number here the sample number in the archive. 
And then the subsequent analysis that was done on that sample, we then store that within an electronic database called the, called the Scottish Soils Database. And there we have the information on about 15,000 soil profiles that, um, that we've collected over the years. And um, Alan, some of these handwritten entries are venerable. They go back to 1934. Um, what's the significance, what, what's the value of having um, uh, the historical data uh, alongside the current data that you collect? Well, one of the, the, the key uh, advantages of, of having the, the, the data and the sample is that these are time capsules. We can look back, we can see how nutrient status, um, how soil pH has changed over time in response to, to new agricultural techniques. Um, and we can also use the samples to actually measure change in things like, for example, soil carbon, which is quite a, a hot topic at the moment in terms of global climate change. Are Scottish soils losing carbon? Are they gaining carbon? Because we have these archived samples and we have the analysis from before, we can actually compare between what we sampled many years ago with what we can, can sample now in the field. We can revisit the same locations, take the samples again, and do the analysis and compare the results.